Um, hello and welcome to um, our second webinar of the day. Um, I'm Mandy Campbell. I'm a member of the um, haematology marketing team at Hariba Medical in France. Um, and today we're going to talk primarily about um, external quality control and proficiency testing. Um, it's something obviously that goes hand in hand with um, uh, well-run laboratory and also well-run um, equipment. So we've invited um, Oliver Schnedelbach, for, who is in charge of CAP Europe, um, to tell us a little bit more about the importance um, of EQC and proficiency testing, and also about the, the CAP programme. So um, he's the expert, so um, I'll hand you over to him. And just to mention, um, if people can use the um, discussion tab at the bottom of the screen, um, the chat tab for asking any questions, um, and um, Oliver will deliver his presentation and then we'll, we'll take questions and answers at the end. Um, so um, over to you, Oliver. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, I will immediately start sharing my screen. Uh, thanks for inviting me to give this presentation for your customers. Um, we have worked uh, with Horiba for a long time in uh, co-developing uh, PT programs. And I would like to acquaint you with what the programs are, uh, what the CAP is and what it does and how it can help you maintain and achieve a laboratory of uh, highest quality. So we will be talking about the following uh, po uh, points. Um, first of all, um, I want to acquaint you with the philosophy and the activities of the CAP. Uh, then uh, tell you a little bit about the value that the CAP can bring to your laboratories and uh, talk to you um, a bit about the uh, PT programs in general and then the particular program that we worked on together with Horiba, which is the FH16. So introducing myself, uh, my name is Oliver Schnedelbach. I am the commercial leader Europe, meaning that I'm responsible for all customers in the European market. Um, my background is actually in neurosciences. I uh, used to work in academic research for a while, and for over 20 years, I have been in the IVD industry uh, in marketing, sales, and business development, and also in general management. So my involvement with the CAP uh, has now been over two and a half years, and uh, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity to work on laboratory quality and in turn on patient safety. So who is the CAP and what does it do? The CAP is a nonprofit organization. It's the official uh, association of American pathologists. And by pathologists, we mean actually both the anatomic and the clinical pathologists. Both of those types are subsumed under the term of pathologists in, in the US. And we have a almost 80 year history. We were founded uh, just after the war. Um, and uh, with that history and the uh, 18,000 members that we have worldwide, we are now the recognized leader in laboratory quality improvement and the experts on uh, quality management in medical laboratories. Um, one of our most uh, important tasks is to advocate for high quality and cost effective patient care. Um, and we do serve uh, over 20,000 laboratories all over the globe, more than 100 countries actually use either our uh, proficiency testing programs or accreditation programs or educational programs. And that's basically what the CAP has to offer. Um, the educational program is uh, part of our task to improve laboratory quality by maintaining and uh, improving the competency of your lab members. Um, the laboratory quality solutions are basically uh, the EQA or PT programs and the accreditation services. Since we are a member-driven organization, uh, there are also extensive resources for our members. Uh, and also we do uh, publish in, in uh, scientifically, uh, in, in peer reviewed journals. Uh, actually, we publish our own uh, anatomic pathology journal, which is the Archives of Pathology. And all taken together, um, we are trying to uh, shape policies and uh, influence uh, politics and policy makers. Uh, and that's uh, subsumed under the term of advocacy. So this is what the CAP does. And as I said, 
we are we have a global presence um we started out as being an american association but now we are a global force and um, we actually have uh, an international marketing team that uh, is represented in most of the continents uh, there is a representative for south america i am responsible for europe uh, we have other uh, local offices in the middle east in southeast asia and in china uh, and some regions like northern asia and africa are still managed from the headquarters uh, in the us in chicago so i said that we are uh, a member driven association and it's the combined expertise of those 18000 members that allow us to um develop and monitor and maintain various programs um for example the uh, pt programs which are uh, monitored by scientific committees uh, the accreditation programs that are monitored by the specific accreditation related committees uh, and all those committees are manned by our members and channel that collective expertise into programs and into quality improvement and the uh, the fact that we are uh, very closely linked to all our members also ensures that the cap always has its ear to the ground uh, regarding new technologies changes in laboratory medicine so all our guidelines and uh, norms and uh, other helpful uh, documentation is always up to date uh, on the latest level of laboratory medical science the um, expertise that is coming into the the cap or into the committees is not only the expertise coming out of our membership but uh, since we have uh, accredited laboratories all over the globe also that interaction leads to more expertise coming in to the cap and uh, there is a constant exchange going on between our cap inspectors and laboratories all over the world uh in terms of uh, finding out best practices for particular problems on on quality matters on risk scenarios and so on so basically we think that we have the broadest global knowledge about quality management in the medical laboratory so let's talk a little bit about the quality solutions that the cap has developed and is continuing to offer to uh, its uh, customers <clears throat> um, we start out with the development of proficiency testing or external quality assessment programs which are objective and externally evaluated assessment trials of the test performance in your laboratory and by participating you can compare how your laboratory is doing relative to other laboratories all over the globe that use the same method or the same instrument so by participating you are already proving that you conform to certain quality standards and that has then led to our laboratory accreditation program which is another objective assessment of the performance of your laboratory against the checklist requirements and the term checklist here is a synonym for the norms that we have developed which are in a way similar but quite different from ISO norms, for example, uh, because the CAP norms or those checklists are the only uh, scientific norms for quality management in the medical laboratory that are used completely identical all over the world. So if you're accredited by CAP, that means that your laboratory has the same quality standards as the uh, greatest names in the field, such as Mayo Clinic and uh, universities in the US and so on and so on, which are also CAP accredited. And I'm pretty sure that no matter where you come from, which region you come from, which country you come from, we have a CAP accredited laboratory in your vicinity. So let's talk a little bit about uh, our PT programs in general. And as I said, we have almost 80 years of experience in laboratory quality management, and we were probably the first ones to develop PT programs back in the 1950s and 1960s. And that has grown to a portfolio of over 700 PT programs for every discipline of the medical laboratory. 
So there, were, there are programs for the classical clinical chemistry and hematology and microbiology, but also for advanced and uh, very specific uh, topics such as molecular pathology, cytogenetics, anatomic pathology, and so on. So we have probably the most comprehensive range of PT programs in anywhere in the world. And if there's any parameter that you're looking for where you haven't found a PT program yet, you have a good chance of finding it in our catalog. And those programs are continuously monitored. As I said, uh, they are supervised by the respective committees uh, and they're constantly updated. And also we introduce about 20 new programs every year in some of those disciplines, depending on where the need is the biggest. So participating in our PT programs <clears throat> has a couple of advantages. Um, for example, since we sell our uh, PT programs worldwide, uh, we usually have a very large peer group size. And we'll talk about that in uh, connection with the FH16 program. So a large peer group size means that uh, the statistical validity of the results is increased and also your passing the program has a large, uh, high statistical validity and can give you the confidence in the accuracy of your result. And there's another uh, reason why the large peer group size is quite advantageous, uh, because the large peer group size means that even if you subdivide the peer group into instrument or method specific subgroups, those groups will still be large enough to have a meaningful statistical validity. And since your lab will then be compared only to other labs that use the same method or instrument, this removes a instrument bias or a method bias uh, and increases the um, chances for you to pass the program with acceptable results. And um, the, um, the, the theme of um, having multiple methods listed in our uh, kit documents um, we will talk about that later uh, when we come to the question of the master list, because it basically means that ma method or instrument manufacturers have already validated our samples with their instrument. And this is exactly what happened when we started the collaboration with Horiba, and they are now part of the master list. So you can choose the instrument um, out of the master list for your result reporting uh, and thereby be compared only to other labs that use the same instrument. <clears throat> so the um, PT programs are, as I said, constantly um, monitored and, and improved and uh, sometimes changed. Um, the committees are comprised of experts in the field. So, of course, the FH16 program is supervised by uh, members that are hematologists themselves. The program has been designed for laboratories using automated blood cell analysis systems. Uh, initially, there were 16 blood cell related parameters on the program right now. Uh, this has grown to 22 parameters, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the participant numbers. Um, are kind of varied uh, because the parts of the program can be used for manual analysis. And for those parts of the program, we have a large number of par uh, participants, like more than 5,000 worldwide. Uh, and if it comes down to the uh, automated analysis parameters, we have typically about 200 or over 200 uh, participants for those parameters that you can compare your uh, results to. So the participation of, uh, of your, your laboratory in a CAP PT program uh, not only tells you that your laboratory has a good quality by passing the program with acceptable results within the uh, acceptable range, but it is also an opportunity for your staff to learn and to maintain competency. Uh, because a lot of the programs that we offer actually have additional educational write-ups um, at the end of the uh, evaluation uh, documentation. So the content of that of those write-ups is always relevant to the elements of the testing. Uh, it provides clinical relevance of the, of the testing to patient care. 
So there are probably some mentions of, of case studies and uh, statistics. And it includes information on current testing trends and more suggestions for troubleshooting. So by um, just studying that and discussing it with, with your peers in your laboratory or in other laboratories, um, this is a great opportunity for your staff to learn and to train and to maintain their competency. Another very important point is the regular monitoring of your results uh, in um, continued uh, participation in our programs. And we'll try to make this as easy as possible for you by introducing a web-based analysis system called the Performance Analytics Dashboard. This is um, accessible through our website at cap.org. Uh, it it uh, needs uh, an access to what we call the Electronic Laboratory Solution Suite, or ELSS, which is basically the um, administration website for your results transmission and uh, receiving the ev evaluation. So uh, when you order the PT program, you automatically have uh, an account, a lab account in ELSS, and through that, you can access the performance analytics dashboard. This is a very handy overview of your performance in multiple PT programs and uh, over multiple sites, if you are part of a laboratory chain, for example. And uh, it is um, like color-coded warning signs that come up when um, results are not satisfactory or not acceptable, so that you can immediately see where the problems are and, and start doing your uh, root cause analysis and your troubleshooting. So let's talk a little bit about the specific details of the FH16 program. This was developed, as I said, for automated hematology systems such as Horiba or Coulter. Um, the 22 parameters are now listed here on the right. This is actually a, a screenshot from the participant summary report. We'll talk about that in a minute, uh, which details not only the analytes contained in the program, but also the criteria for evaluation and the acceptance criteria. So you see that uh, in some cases, um, the results are acceptable if they deviate plus minus a couple of standard deviations from the mean of all uh, participants, or there is a percentage uh, deviation allowed. And in this case here for NRBC, uh, the, the results are actually not graded because it's a purely educational uh, parameter that is then discussed in the participant summary report but you won't get a grade on your uh, lab's result. And this has purely educational purposes for maintaining the competency of your staff. And as I said, for the automated parameters, we currently have over 200 participants uh, all over the world. And those participants um, are mainly uh, uh, Coulter customers right now. Um, the master list that details the program codes for manufacturer instruments, so manufacturers and instruments, um, can be seen here. Um, this chapter master list is also a part of the kit instructions that are being shipped out with every sample or every kit that uh, comes to your lab. And being on the master list means that those samples have been validated by Horiba and found suitable for the UMIS and instruments. And not only has Horiba validated them uh, by doing extensive lab work, but they have also determined specific instructions for users that are also printed in the um, kit instructions. So we have this page here of generic handling instructions and then on chapter eight or point eight, there are specific instructions for UMIS and users just to make sure that you get the best possible results, correct results out of the participation and increase your, your chance of passing the, the program. And Horiba has put those two instruments, the UMIS and 500 and 1500 uh, on the master list uh, since last year. And for them, it was a strategic decision because Horiba feels that it is important 
for you as the end users to have a reliable and globally distributed PT program to ascertain the quality of the results coming out of this instrument. So how would you go about participating in this program? Well, first of all, you need to contact one of us. I am responsible for the European market, for my colleagues, for, for any customer that is uh, in another region, um, you can write an email to the international team at cap.org and you will be directed to the regional representative uh, responsible for your region. And then you will probably get a document like the one here on the right, which is the order form. And you need to fill in some administrative data like the address and the uh, contact persons and the billing addresses and so on and so on. And of course, the information on the program that you want to order. And then you get uh, a performer from the cap, uh, which you can use to effect the payment either by credit card or by uh, wire transfer or by issuing a purchasing order. And then when the payment has been uh, received by the cap, the order is booked and you get all the information necessary to prepare customs procedures and in importation of the material. So all that is going to be sent to you well in advance so that you have plenty of time preparing your customs officials for the importation of materials that very often the custom doesn't really know what to do with. So you might need to explain it. If they still don't understand it, come back to us. We'll give you whatever is necessary in terms of documentation, reassurance or explanation um, what the program is or the, what the materials are going to be used for. Okay, we have been mentioning this master list process for a while. And just to detail what kind of work Horiba has done um, to get the, the, their system on the master list and to make uh, this, this choice for you easier for you. Um, so the, the whole process begins with the realization of the manufacturer that uh, the CAPPT is of high importance for their global customers. Then Horiba obtains the, the kits, sample kits from previous shipments. They test them, they validate them, they document the validation, send all the documentation back to the cap. And the cap then issues a code and puts it on the master list, on the kit instructions for the next shipment. So um, since the, the program is shipped uh, three times a year, um, the, putting it on the master list takes a couple of, of weeks, um, but now it is on the master list and uh, everybody can, can start using it and improving their, their chances of, uh, of passing the program. So how do you work with the program? I said, I told you how you can order the program, uh, how you can get it out of customs. So the samples arrive at your laboratory uh, and you read through the kit instructions, you treat the sample as any patient sample that uh, comes into your laboratory, and then you report the results that you have. Now, reporting those results is only possible electronically through the ELSS website that I've mentioned. You find that on cap.org uh, when accessing, trying to access ELSS, uh, you will be asked for your personal ID. Uh, and if you don't have one, you should get one and you can sign up right there and then. So what happens is as soon as you've ordered, as, as soon as, as your laboratory has ordered the PT program, we set up in a, a laboratory account for your lab within ELSS. And then what you have to do is to get a personal account for your lab members, those who will be using the kit and, and testing, doing the testing, those who will be supervising and so on. They all need a personal account, uh, which you can freely choose by yourself, uh, uh, passwords and the login names and everything. And as soon as that is confirmed by an email from the cap, you link that personal account to the lab account. And by then you can access the lab account and uh, uh, enter the results and uh, 
order new programs and so on and so on. So I'm, I'm giving you here an example of what the uh, central web page of ELSS looks like. This is a sample account or a, a teaching account that we have uh, internally at the cap. So there would be the name and the identifier or the customer number of your laboratory. And the most important thing is here in the section proficiency testing quality improvement, for example, result form data entry. So if you click on this, there will be uh, sub pages coming up where you can choose the program that you have uh, uh, submitted to or have signed up for. Uh, and uh, you will be invited to enter the results, um, which is only possible after you have received the samples uh, and the kits. And then you enter the results and you validate them, send them off to the cap. And after a predetermined time, usually about two or three weeks, we have fin finished the evaluation, the statistical analysis, and you will be getting two documents. Uh, one of them is the so called evaluation report, which details your personal, your lab's results uh, for the program and the acceptable range that, of the peer group that you have been compared to, and also a grading whether your results have been acceptable or unacceptable. The other document that you receive is the so-called participant summary report, which is a summarization of all the results of, from all the participants. So you will see in that report how many participants there were, what kind of uh, instruments or uh, method codes they have been using, uh, and what kind of results, collated results they have been using. So you cannot differentiate for individual laboratories uh, because that would be uh, contrary to data protection laws in the US and all over the world. But you can see um, basically which uh, instrument user um is part of which group and has has obtained uh, a certain a certain result range and those reports evaluation reports are then available by down for download uh, under this sub page here evaluation reports so this is basically what the elss uh, transmission page looks like and What we suggest uh, is that uh, each, each lab has multiple users uh, available to, to access the documentation and to, to enter uh, results and to validate those results, just to make sure that uh, absences or uh, sick days are covered uh, and you don't have to ask for an extension of the due date. The due date is an important uh, time point. Um, those due dates are listed in the shipping calendar here, for example. So um, if you participate in, in one or multiple programs and you don't remember exactly when the samples are arriving and when the results are being are due, um, you just click on this. You get either an Excel or a PDF file um, and you can uh, look up all the programs that you've signed up for. Um, and the, the shipping dates and the due dates are, are listed here. So you always know when something has to be done and uh, to participate in good time uh, before the, the due date is over. So what does the um, uh, evaluations look like? Um, as I said, you get two documents. So the participant summary report is the overview. And I have an example here for the FH16 participant summary report. And you can see that uh, right now um, we have the Coulter uh, instrumentation listed here as a separate peer group. That is not the total number of participants. As I said, there are uh, over 200. <clears throat> but um, if the, um, the participants that select another method code or instrument code, if that's less than 10, then we do not separately uh, list them here, uh, especially if it's if it's a three or less, then they are not going to be listed at all. If it's between three and nine participants, then um, there is a, uh, a listing here, but it's kind of truncated. Uh, we don't do all the uh, statistics that we do with the larger participant groups, simply because the numbers don't lend themselves to meaningful statistics. So there's only a um, 
a marginal, a, a minimum uh, statistics uh, listed here. So I can only encourage um, everyone to sign up for the program, to make up the numbers, to get to 10 users at least, so that you will be graded according to the other users in, in that group uh, as a separate peer group. And this uh, PSR document is quite important because it shows you a lot about uh, shifts and trends and also latest standards in the market. And the uh, especially the shifts in use of, of instrumentation is uh, quite relevant. Uh, and also to compare the uh, results, the mean results of users of different instruments uh, will give you some information about uh, like instrument bias uh, and things like that. Very important comparison data to be found here. Um, I also said that uh, there are some uh, complementary benefits such as the uh, educational write-ups or even the uh, continuing education courses that are part of some of our PT programs. Uh, the educational write-ups we have already discussed. Um, some of the uh, PT programs have parts that are um, that allow to claim CE points, uh, and some core, some um, um, program PT programs are uh, continuing education programs in itself. So that's quite a, a nice um, bonus um, to maintain your professional competency by claiming CE points. So what does the uh, evaluation report looks like? I, I mentioned that the evaluation report is the summarization of your lab's results. And this is what the sheet looks like. You will find the analytes in the program here, the sample numbers or the specimen numbers, and then the specific results that your laboratory has obtained and the limits of acceptability and the grading. Those results have all been acceptable because the uh, upper limit or the, uh, the the limit example for uh, for for example for FH16 sample number 10 was between 3.5 and 4.9 and your result was 4.3 so you're smack in the middle. Now what is very important is to look at the graph on the right here because this is a graphic description of the results of your last three participations. I, I mentioned that the FH16 program is shipped three times per year. So um, this particular document shows the results from the last, the B shipment of 2022, uh, the last but one, the A shipment of 2022, and the last but two, the C shipment of 2021. Now, what does that look like? We have the five samples and the deviation of your results from the peer group mean in percent. So we notice in this particular picture here that one and a half years ago, or like about a year ago, your participation was very low. Um, the, the, the results were on the low side. And then that has changed within the four months between the C shipment 21 and the A shipment 2022. It, now you're slightly above the medium, median. So those results already look a lot better than that. But maybe we can start seeing a trend here. And that's also prominent here in the hematocrit. Um, very low values uh, about a year ago, and then slowly creeping up, coming into the slightly positive range. And that could be a warning sign, for example. So I would read that as something slowly happening here. And it could be that the next participation gets even more positive, even more high. And at some point, you're slipping out of the acceptable range. Now, what I read here is something has happened between the C shipment and the A shipment here. Maybe instrument uh, uh, maintenance or a change in calibration or the use of an unsuitable calibrator or something like that. But definitely, even though the results are still acceptable, this would give me cause to do a root cause analysis because this is definitely not a typical statistical distribution of results. So this is something that you can learn and your, your lab members can learn from these documents and that helps you maintain a high quality laboratory. As I said, <clears throat> root cause analysis, it's part of the troubleshooting and we have 
plenty of documents and, and helpful information about how to do a troubleshooting. There is a specific section or a chapter in the participant summary report with uh, specific tips on how to do the troubleshooting. Um, we do have a, uh, a guide for the participation in our PT programs that also has a chapter on, on troubleshooting. And we have what we call the exception investigation worksheet here. This is a structured document that guides you with a series of questions through the scenarios where errors could occur. And we can take a look at some of those questions here. So this is like a five or six page document uh, and you are required to, or you are invited to answer those questions with yes or no. And by analyzing the answers, you should be able at the end of uh, working through the document to tell what is the root cause. Is it a clerical, cause, a clerical error? Is it a procedural error? Is it a structural error or whatever? And by filling in this document and having it signed by your lab director, you also fulfill the requirements of most uh, accreditation uh, bodies uh, by doing a root cause analysis and suggesting and implementing uh, corrective measures. So what is the total value that participating in CAP PTs will bring to your lab? The CAP has a full spectrum of programs for all quality management needs of laboratory, medical laboratories. There is a plethora of timely knowledge from experts to stay current with changes in laboratory medicine. All our programs and all our accreditation services are always at the forefront of medical and laboratory science. We provide very useful and usable outputs and monitoring tools to help manage and improve the performance of the lab and the quality of your results. You also have access to a wide variety of education by either participating in the PT programs or by participating in our educational programs, which can also be found in the educational catalog on our website. And of course, we help you uh, execute a root cause analysis for quality failures and to improve the procedures and the processes in your lab. So who are the supporters of your lab? Um, that would be me for all the European customers, my colleagues in the international team, um, which are available at internationalteam at cap.org for new international customers. And for generic questions, you can also always contact the uh, contact center at cap.org. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm coming to the end and thank you for your attention and I'm ready to answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Elena. That was really, um, really interesting. Um, just to, to say from our side, um, I think it was interesting you talking about the, the master list um, because it's something also that we've looked at from our point of view. Um, one of the plans for the future is to, to put a table um, in the user manual with um, a list of, um, of, of schemes which we, we have been able to validate um, and more information uh, for users plus the sample handling side of it so um, I think if it, with a sort of double approach both from the um, uh, the organizing scheme and also from from the uh, supplier I think really uh, really helps the end user so I have a number of questions and if anyone has any more questions if they can put them in the chat um, some of them seem to overlap a bit so I will try and um, try and consolidate them a bit um, so one of the questions was around, I think you mentioned um, about the customs documents and things like that. Obviously with, um, with worldwide shipment, um, how long are the, the samples stable for if there's any delays um, in delivery? I, I assume that they need um, to be sent in a refrigerated um, uh, container. So can you give me a little bit more detail about the, the sort of shipping and stability? Yes, sure. Um, 
I've got the, the data right here. So uh, the samples for FH16 are whole blood samples, so they have to be shipped uh, with a cool pack. And the stability uh, uh, unopened is actually 28 days. And once you open it in your lab, uh, stability is still eight days. That's pretty so the, um, the shipping dates uh, until the due date uh, is about three weeks, um, which both accounts for the stability <clears throat> and the need for returning the results very quickly. Mm -hmm. but, um, um, for example, if a, 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 a sample arrives a little later because it was held up in customs or something like that, <clears throat> and you're getting perilously close to the due date, you can always ask us for an extension. So usually we can give, we can grant about a week of extension and the samples will still be stable. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I just had a question about the, so um, yeah. how long um, from submit, submitting the results until the report is available? I guess that depends on the end of, you know, the due date of, of yes. the scheme. Yeah, it does. Um, so generally, uh, let me check. The in the case of FH sixteen, the evaluation, the duration of the evaluation is really short. <clears throat> um, it's only about a week to eight or eight or nine days. That is to say, if there are no extensions required. So, if any one customer asks for an extension, that pushes back the evaluation date. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, and you mentioned, I think, three shipments per year. So is that one sample or multiple? Uh, no, uh, each, each shipment of the three contains five samples or five okay. challenges, as we call it. So it's 15 in the total course of the year. 15 per year. And, and if you, is it possible to, so presumably you can, you can sign up for a year, but if you just wanted to, to use the scheme as a benchmark, so just to, to do a, a one-off, is, is that possible through? Um, through yes, yes. You, um, customers can order individual shipments. Um, so if they, if they um, order, if they place their order at the beginning of the year, uh, then what we normally assume is that they want to order the whole year's program. Um, but uh, if you want to order just one single shipment, you need to indicate this to us uh, in the order form. <clears throat> and um, it's, it's very easy to just uh, mention the A or B or C shipment that you want to receive. Uh, since they all have fixed shipping dates, you can choose freely. Um, so they're basically the, the shipping dates for the ABC in 2023 were the 23rd of January, the 1st of May, and the 18th of September. Okay. And I have a, a <laughs> don't know if you can answer this, I have a very uh, practical question here, uh, and that is, um, what is the pricing of the programme? <laughs> How much does yes, it cost? I can. I can. <laughs> Someone I can. will always ask that. <laughs> so the, um, the annual uh, uh, programme's price is uh, $351, uh, which means that each of the shipments costs uh, $117. Now, uh, I need to mention that there is a shipping and handling fee coming on top of that, and that's $168 for the whole year, no matter how many participations there are. So if you participate in, in the whole three shipments, it's $168. If you only order a single shipment, it's also $168, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I think that's it. Unless, oh, no, I have um, another question coming through. Um, oh, what is the timeline of the PT reports? Um, the, oh, you mean the, dif the time difference between the signing I'm, I'm not, the I'm results not sure. so, and getting the evaluation? Um, the, the, this is in, in, in the case of FH16, it's about 10 days. So I have an example here. The due date for the A shipment of this year was the 14th of February. And the evaluation date was the 22nd of February. Um, mentioning that, uh, the maximum extension of, of the due date was one week to the 21st of February, which would have pushed back the evaluation also by uh, a week. <clears throat> okay, okay. Um, I hope that clarifies. So if, if, if not, if you can come back. Um, oh, is it possible 
to show one PT, PT report. report. Oh, can you, I, I think I did that in my presentation. I can quickly go back to the go, presentation. Just if you go want back. To. This is part of the evaluation. The evaluation report is fairly short. It's only about two or three pages. So there's a title page naming the, the name of the laboratory and the customer number. Uh, and then this page here with the, uh, with the results uh, and the sequence of results over the last couple of participations. So this is, the, this is the evaluation report. And then there's the generic report here, the participant summary report. Okay. So this is an example from sometime in 2022, I think, that I found that I'm sharing with you. And also that, that presentation here, um, I'm, I've sent it to Horiba and they can share it with you. Uh, uh, and um, I'm, I'm giving it out to you, basically, so you can look it up. OK, thank you very much. Oh, I think hopefully that's um, answered the question. Um, just one final one, unless anyone else has got some more questions um, from me, I just wanted to ask a little bit more about the um, accreditation programme. Now, I'm in France now and I was in the UK mm. originally where we, we it's mandatory to do um, the ISO 15189. Um, is that something that, that you assist to or is it something um, additional that, uh, that you do? Because I think you mentioned that you have your own Yes. Yeah, it, it basically depends on, uh, on, on the region or the country um, your, your lab is in. Um, so if you are in a, uh, living in a country where the accreditation with the national accreditation body is mandatory, uh, then we, can st we still offer our, our accreditation services as an additional uh, accreditation. Uh, because we think that the, the, the quality differences between a CAP accreditation and an ISO-based accreditation are quite considerable. <laughs> there are a couple of reasons why laboratories come to the CAP for accreditation. Uh, one reason is because they are a uh, specialized laboratory that does international business and wants to compare themselves to other laboratories all over the globe. Um, there are the, the other reason is uh, that laboratories are convinced <clears throat> that the CAP accreditation is so much more thorough and in-depth and specific to the laboratory needs that it will elevate the quality of the laboratory to a much higher level than with a uh, ISO accreditation alone. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>